Roxy came into my life when I found out that um, I had cancer. Um, I was diagnosed with gastric cancer in 2011, and um, I underwent two surgeries, underwent radiation, and um, after all that, I was left bedridden for several months, and I was pretty depressed. I told myself I would, if I ever got up out of bed, that I would never give myself a reason to get back in bed. So I started running, even though I, 12 years in the military made me kind of despise running. But the concept of obstacle racing as a whole um, kind of brings me back to my army days. Um, I, I, I love the camaraderie that you find on the course from other fellow Spartans, and I love um, the challenge that you give yourself. And um, and so I, I started obstacle racing, but I learned early on that um, that I am that I suffer from hypoglycemia and that that triggers seizures. So um, since I lived alone, my caseworker I gave me the option of either moving into hospice care. Um, getting a live-in nurse or getting a service dog and I took the lesser evil I wasn't really oh <laughs> she heard the start <laughs> she gets really excited at the start line I mean she hears go <laughs> no don't that's not us <laughs> in any case um, so uh, Roxy came into my life initially as a way to combat depression. I was really depressed, um, but then when I developed my illness, well, when I found out the hard way by having seizures and getting concussions and then eventually breaking my arm, um, she was trained for, for, for seizure detection and, um, and then she was awarded to me in... Uh, Oh goodness, how long have we been together? <laughs> We've been together for four and a half years now? Yeah, four and a half years. Yeah, so um, I got her in little bursts at first, um, and then she was fully awarded to me. And um, I learned that she really has a high energy level the hard way as well. Um, I was kind of. I was racing at the time and I was afraid of what race directors would say if I showed up with a service animal because they would ask me, like, okay, well, what do you, what do you suffer from? And if I told them my, my medical conditions, they wouldn't allow me to run because I'd be a liability. So um, I kept her kind of like a dirty little secret and I didn't tell people. I, I would hand her off to a friend at the start line and I would run either with a really close friend who knew my condition to kind of keep an eye on me in case I, well, so that I wouldn't like drown or fall off an obstacle. Or, or I took my chances if it was a short enough race. But um, she didn't like that because it was outside of her scope of job. Well, she didn't like that because her job required her to be by my side. And so um, I took her to a Spartan once and she broke the leash and she followed me along. And, um, and that's how that started. <laughs> So, um, I realized that I couldn't just keep her at the start line anymore, and I also realized that she really likes doing a lot of this stuff, and she likes getting muddy, she likes climbing things, she does really well at jumping walls, apparently, and, um, and so I started bringing her along, I started, I, I got a lot of pushback from a lot of race directors at first, and I had to provide paperwork and whatnot, but now it's to the point where in America, I, there's not even a question. Everybody knows who she is, so, so we just we keep running. She loves it. She gets so excited at the start line. She starts getting all pumped up, and she starts to ruin with everyone else. I know about coming at 30. She starts screaming when everyone screams, I am a Spartan! And she usually loses two or three shoes at the start line. And <laughs> she's my best friend.
She remembers eventually that she's got a job. So like a quarter mile down the road, she'll like stop and be like, oh yeah, wait, I need to stay with, stick with mom because mom is a lot slower than me. <laughs> what was your experience here up in Canada? With, like, what do you think about the course? We don't have these mountain things here in Florida. <laughs> I have to admit the views are... There were multiple times in this race today that I stopped and I was just, my breath was taken away, not just because of the altitude, but because it was just beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Canada is beautiful. This is a beautiful country you guys have here. I was very impressed. Um, and everybody's so nice. I thought that was just a stereotype thing. No, that's like legit. You guys are really all very, very nice. Really nice people. Are you ready for treats? Get out. Up, up, up. There you go. You ready to go? Inside mommy? Yeah. Do you have time for one more? Sure. So, to someone who is in your similar situation before or even yourself when you're in that situation before Roxy, what would you say to that person? What advice would you have? Crickets. <laughs> no. Um, I would say there's, I know it seems bleak, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and there's, there's just, you may not think there's support network, you may not think there's people who care, but there are lots and lots of people who, who will reach out a hand and help you. And I thought I was very alone in this world. And then I started doing obstacle course racing and I started spending time with Spartans and among Spartans. And, and I realized that I'm, I'm not alone and that there's always going to be somebody that's going to be there to help me out. Um, it's a very strong community, and 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 I do the same. I try to do the same to to others that that was done to me in the past. If anybody ever has any need of anything, um, if anybody wants to just talk, if anybody wants to reach out, um, they can always reach out to me. And, and I I can't stress enough how how profound the the. Barton community has been to my not just my physical um, my 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 physical uh, I'm sorry I'm trying to think <laughs> not not just my healing physically but my my definitely my mental and emotional um, state of being. Roxy, you have any closing words? Get up. Say something to the nice people. Oh, really? She's tired. She's a bit tired. It's okay. Um, so for me, uh, closing words. Live life like each day's the last. I, I know this all too well. I'm on borrowed time that I'm pretty sure I'll never be able to pay back. I I mean, three combat tours and then cancer, you kind of start really appreciating every day. So, um, definitely live every day to its fullest. So, true story, true story. Um, last year, we did, we flew from Tampa on Friday night all the way out to Seattle, Washington. We ran the beast out there on Saturday, and then we took a flight, a, a red-eye flight that Friday night and flew all the way to New Jersey to run the New Jersey Super on Sunday. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> and we ran back-to-back -back beasts in South Carolina, although I don't know that that was, well, it was pretty hard, yeah, I'll give you that. And how many trifectas do you have? We have 13 trifectas. God. So what's next for you guys? What's on the... Right, Jack! I don't know. A couple more trifectas. <laughs> Maybe an ultra beast. We're, we're eyeballing Dallas. Because, I don't know, I'm feeling particularly crazy. I don't know. What do you think, Dog Dog? Roxy, what do you think? What do you think we should do? 
She gives she always, <laughs> I wake up every morning and this this dog always gives me the look like, you know, you're kinda crazy mommy. I don't know why I put up with you. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Maybe maybe even a nogogi. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. We we did a twelve hour hurricane in Chicago a couple of years ago. And and I got sick. I actually had it like I ended up like getting having paramedics pull me. Yeah, but um but I took some time out with them and then I returned right back to it and finished it. Yeah. And somehow the cadre let me. Yeah. So And she looked at me like I was crazy the entire time.